All right, welcome back. Today we are going to be analyzing Matt Bomer or Bomber. I don't know how you pronounce it, but all right, this should be a really interesting one because my personal opinion is I think he's gonna score the highest among all 30 men. And all the men I'm analyzing are already inherently attractive because I picked them to study what would make an attractive measurement. So the fact that he's going to score, in my estimation, the highest out of all of them just shows that he's probably one of the best looking men of all time, objectively. And let's begin. I'm going to get through a lot, a lot today. Just because there's not really many flaws and I'm trying to tr uh, touch on all the positives. So let's actually begin with his only two real flaws that I can uh, pick out. And excuse me for the quality, but it's not really easy to find side profile views. Especially when they're not models, it's, uh, it's tough to find side profiles. So his brow ridge inclination is his m first flaw. And it's a minor flaw, like his brow, brow ridge is a uh, little bit too flat. And ideally you want to be a little bit more inclined, especially for men. As men tend to have more protrusive uh, glabellar regions. And his brow ridge, as I calculated it, is about 7.3 degrees tilted. And keep in mind, I've already went through and done all the measurements. There's 40 or more measurements, so I can't get through them all in the video and show you. But I've done them all. So I'll just show you how I do them, and if they don't match up, then I'll tell you what the actual measurement is. Because I double check with three or four different photos to make sure. So that's his first flaw, and it's very minor. His second flaw is his eye spacing. And it is the nature of his eyes being one eye apart, and they're not one eye apart. So you can see that his eyes are a little bit closer than one eye. It's about... 0.88 eyes apart which is not bad at all but it's uh it's not that one eye apart ideal uh in fact his eyes themselves are actually really greatly spaced so we can take the eye separation ratio really a uh, common measurement for eye harmony and eye spacing and his eyes interpupillary distance or the distance between his pupils makes up about 45% exactly 45% of his facial width and that's in the ideal 45 to 47% for men and actually it's probably beneficial because men tend to look more striking with closer set eyes within reason as women tend to have wider set eyes so if you are lower within that 45 to 47% range it my theory personally is that it makes you more masculinized and attractive without compromising on your eyes looking like a cyclops. So yeah, his eye spacing is exceptional. While we're on the topic of eyes, his canthal tilt or how upturned his eyes are, are perfectly tilted. Like this is the ideal canthal tilt for a Caucasian. And it's about six degrees exactly. 5.9 degrees it's great you want to be in that 5 to 7 7.5 range for men women can be slightly higher and his eyes are almost exactly 3 to 1 so his eye width is almost exactly 3 to 1 with his eye height and this is neither overly overtly masculinized or feminized so that's perfect I think this is the one place in the face where you don't want to look too masculinized or feminized because it just it kind of ruins some of your homeliness or appealingness because your eyes want to look like warm you don't want to have eyes that look like a like a tiger or something you know within reason like his eyes still look masculine but they look harmonious and you'll see that most of the attractive men have this trait they're not going to be too far away from that three to one and you can see his eyes are ideally tilted here. Some clear, positive cancel tilt. Alright, let's move on. So, we'll look at his uh, gonial angle, actually, next. 
His Guanile angle is ideal. It is about a hundred and it's between a hundred and seventeen and a hundred twenty, depending on the photo. So I calculated it as let's see here, 117.7 degrees. So it's in that ideal range, and it's uh, it's harmonious. His ramus is not as long as some of the other men on this uh, guide, but it's mostly as a proportion because his uh, mandible or his jaw is really forward grown. So in relation, his ramus doesn't look that long, but you can see kind of compared to this guy, it's, it's definitely long. Um, all right, let's go to his jaw width. So his jaw is really wide. This is another characteristic of a masculine face. And let's see here. So his jaw is 91%, 91.6% of his facial width. So his bigonial width, which is this line, is 91% of his bizygomatic width. And that's in the ideal range for men, which is about 84 to 93%. You don't want to have an overly wide jaw. And his chin is perfectly proportioned with his philtrum. Excuse me. So his chin is about 2.45 times his philtrum, which is masculinizing, but still in the harmonious ideal 2 to 2.5 range. So, I mean, proportionally, this guy really doesn't have <laughs> any flaws. And his flaws are actually one each of the front and one of the side so if you didn't have a trained eye you probably would say his face is flawless um, his facial width to height ratio and this measurement is linked with uh, perceptions of creativity assertiveness aggressiveness dominance there's a lot of different studies on this measurement it's pretty popular but I think that's just a secondary factor, like, I don't think any study is going to conclusively tie this measurement alone to aggressiveness or creativity. There's a lot of confounding variables in how a face appears that may make you think it's creative, um, and a lot of these studies don't uh, account for that. But the measurement in and of itself is attractive because to have a high ratio, you need a wide face and you need a compact mid face like low set brows so this is in the ideal range for men which is about 1.9 to 2.1 and his facial thirds are exceptional like these are probably the most ideal facial thirds you can have there's a lot of different variations in facial thirds and facial proportion proportions so there could be a face theoretically that exists that is as attractive as Matt Bomer and as objectively harmonious, but that looks completely different than his. So no perfect face has to look exactly like this. There's the variations in proportions and they can look different. So his upper third is about 33.1%. His middle third is a 31.1%. And his lower third is 35 point nine or point eight sorry percent i was rounding so it might be a little bit off it's not adding up to 100 but generally when the lower third is a little bit taller than the rest that is ideal and none of them stray too far from 33 percent each so that's very harmonious it doesn't have an overly long forehead an overly long uh, nose etc uh Actually, I forgot to note, one of his other flaws, which is not really a flaw, it's just a characteristic of his face that is not maybe the best, is his total facial width to height ratio, which just measures how long his face is divided by how wide it is. And it is about exactly 
1.4 so his face is 1.4 times taller than it is wide and this is in the ideal 1.3 to 1.4 range but you probably want to be like right in the middle of that range at about 1.36 so his face definitely is a little bit uh, taller than most men but this also can be a masculinizing qual masculinizing quality because uh, men have taller skulls and facial shapes on average than women so I wouldn't really consider this a flaw but uh, proportionally we'll, we'll consider it a flaw just just because all right let's look at his jaw frontal angle this is another really important factor in facial harmony so the reason it's important is because it is directly tied with your gonial angle or your jaw angle and it is directly tied with your mandibular plane angle or how downward sloped your jaw is so like it's the combination of this angle the combination of this angle and the combination of this angle right here that kind of make the shape of your jaw in the front of you and you can see his jaw is not downward grown or it's not too flat 88.7 degrees which is perfectly ideal and look his ipsilateral ailer angle is almost exactly the same so there's literally no deviation there it's just perfect harmony basically and yeah his neck is about 93% of his jaw width which is in the ideal 90 to 100 percent range and we'll look at his side profile lastly and before seeing his score his side profile lip assessments and all his lip assessments are perfect so you can see that his rickets e-line it's not probably the most ideal but I would lean towards it being ideal rather than unideal because his lip lies more behind the line than his lower lip. Then we have another assessment like this, kind of connecting the lower lip and upper lip where they should meet or somewhat be in line. And then take out the chin to the subnasal, lower lip protrudes a little bit more which is ideal. And yeah, his lips are, are good, they're not overly like protruding or anything and yeah that's uh that's all i think we're going to get through in terms of measurements and let's take a look at how he scores so i also want to bring up this study uh it's just a quick eye and hair and complexion study so this was done polling 500 caucasian men and women so keep in mind these results may not be like representative of how a African person views these eye colors and hair colors but so as far as complexion a medium white which tans to gold was overwhelmingly liked the most um, in men actually females preferred brown eyes the most which is interesting but it's not a big disparity there just seems to be a general tendency towards darker coloring in men it's the dark and handsome like stereotype um, but i don't think these results are really that significant and other studies would say that eye color has no influence and here it says that males liked uh, light blue the most in women yeah so this this is not that relevant um but the complexion is what i see here so uh matt bomer has a good complexion he's not overly pale or or um very light which freckles doesn't have freckles i don't know if that matters but all right so we score is 96 percent which is the highest so far near perfection we'll see exactly where he scores and where he falls short a little bit so the brow ridge inclination a little bit three points deducted out of 500 uh the nasal tip two points deducted out of 500 his face height, 7.5 points deducted. His 
eye spacing 7.5 points deducted so yeah i don't think he got more than like 30 points deducted in total that's uh, very impressive 96 percent and that is a 9.6 so we'll give him a score here 96 percent 9.6 in facial harmony and it's not like his features are lacking either because this measurement just takes into account your foundation so your proportions and your bone structure but there are other factors in attractiveness like your hair color i just mentioned your eyebrow density your uh facial hair density which i don't uh, i don't know if he has facial hair like over here but yeah so i mean this is pretty much as close to a flawless male face you can get in a caucasian and and i want to uh, bring that up so the reason i'm only doing caucasians for this series is because all the measurements here they have to be done on all caucasians and i've hidden all of them here but just i don't want you to see like my other video ideas yet but for me to get the correct averages and uh, statistics, I need to have them all be Caucasians because all, like almost every single one of these measurements, there's probably only one or two that aren't variable between ethnicities. So even within ethnic groups, uh, there may be lower mouth to nose with ratios, lower facial convexities or higher facial convexities, uh, wider set eyes, lower facial width to height ratios if your eyebrows are lower. So should I be deducting points for an ethnicity having that as their average? Uh, probably not. And also if I mix them in here, it will throw off these measurements and give me results that aren't accurate of what a idealized Caucasian average would be in attractive men. So that's the reason I'm only doing Caucasians. I'll be going through 30 Caucasian men in this series. And this is a study as well. Like I'm, I'm going through this study with you in progress and I'll be going through 30 Caucasian women as well and then afterwards we can we can probably go into another series which will take forever but you know we'll see how it goes uh, yeah thank you for watching suggest any celebrities you'd like to see in the future because I can add them to the sheet and yeah that, that's it thank you